Go to live capture, make sure that we're connected. Nautical archaeology is specifically looking at ships and ship ar architecture. So it's not just underwater archaeology. Um, you can do prehistoric archaeology underwater, but nautical specifically is looking at ships. All right, go ahead. For me, when I wanted to come to grad school to study this topic, this was the only place I thought I wanted to go. Like there was, there was no safety school. This is it. This is the, the best. Um, it's, it's weird because a and known for so many things, but in my world, this is the Ivy League of underwater archaeology. So I'm going to take one of these wadding that was found in the inner bore contents. The hidden history is what I really like. I want to tell these stories. When I started college, I knew I wanted to go into archaeology, but I didn't know exactly what route I wanted to go into. I didn't know if it was going to be conservation or terrestrial or underwater. And so I was kind of like dabbling my feet into multiple fields. I took this nautical archaeology class of the Americas, and that's when I knew. Everything just clicked and everything just fell into place, no matter how cliche that sounds. We have uh, three core staff conservators out here and then everybody else that works with us is either um, an undergraduate or graduate student. Conservation is one of those things that you can read about and you can learn about, but until you start to do it, it's just academic. And so the reason that we've been so successful placing conservators in labs around the country and the world is because our students come and they actually come get their hands dirty here. It is really cool because we get to have all these projects geared towards us since we're one of the few who actually do it. And then I get to use state-of-the-art technology like this ferro arm in DesignX to laser scan them. So it's like combining multiple fields into one. That's what archaeology is. We start using equipment that's designed in other fields and we use it to our benefit. A little precarious. Let's see here. I'm Catherine Duffy. I'm Chief Curator for Coastal Heritage Society in Savannah, Georgia. So in the early months of 2021, as part of the Savannah Harbor Expansion Project, uh, they were doing some routine dredging uh, investigation. And during this routine dredging, they pulled up three cannon and some anchors and halted this multi-million dollar production to do some further investigation. And they found that there was more than just one, there were many, many cannons. So the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers became involved in the project, as did the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. And what was initially three ultimately became 19 cannon and dozens and dozens of artifacts that were recovered. The amount of research that is being invested in the origins of these cannons is pretty significant. It will provide a better understanding of, uh, first of all, their origin, where they came from, what they were used for, but also gives us tactile, tangible examples of this very important moment in our history. This group of materials is not the first time Texas A&M University's Conservation Research Lab has conserved items from the Savannah River. In the uh, years of 2015 to 2017, they recovered Civil War ironclad ship called the CSS Georgia. And so a lot of the materials that were recovered from the Georgia, very close to where these cannons were recovered, went out to Texas A&M University. And also they somewhat recently finished a project conserving 25 iron cannons, so it just seemed like the natural fit for these materials to go to Texas. We use mostly tried and true methods. We do a lot of experimentation to um, improve those methods, but ultimately we tend to rely on the things that we know will get the job done effectively. We are largely driven by uh, the artifact itself. So it's not like uh, I can just go through the steps and then bing, bang, boom, it's done. It's not up to us that the artifacts drive um, the, the timeline. What's unique about these artifacts is that they've been in this stasis at the bottom of the Savannah River for hundreds of years. And so they require some additional care to stabilize them so that they can be put back on land and displayed in the museum. So when they come out of the water, um, they're covered in what we call an incrustation or concretion. So as iron sits in water and it starts to corrode, um, a bunch of different things start to happen. 
sea life is attracted to that corrosion, so it starts to grow on that. It also starts to fix minerals from the water, um, so calcium and magnesium, and build like a concrete shell around it. For these cannons, uh, they came to us concreted. And so um, our first step after we document everything really well is to remove the concretion, clear the bore, um, and then once the bore is clear, uh, we put it into a, uh, a vat of electrolyte. It goes through a process called electrolytic reduction, where we use um, direct current to force the salts out of the metal and to stabilize the corrosion products that are there. Um, the additional step that we're taking is to laser scan all of them before they go in, so we can also laser, them scan, uh, laser scan them when they come out and see if there's any appreciable difference, which I don't expect there to be. When we're deconcreting them and we're hitting them with the hammer and we hit the surface, we're the first people to see that surface. And it's just, it's a lot of firsts that are a wild experience to me. And we learn about all these history, like uh, stories and textbooks and TV, but to be the actual physical one getting dirty and doing it all, it, it's, it's everything I wanted to do. Things that come through the lab, we're the first people to, uh, to, to make new discoveries about these things since they were lost. So like for these cannons, when we open up the barrel, we're the first person to see in that barrel since they were loaded 250 years ago. And uh, yeah, there's been times where you, at the end of the day, you're, you're home and you're pulling splinters from 17th century ships out of your hand and you get kind of grumbling about how much it hurts or how dirty it is or how late you had to work. And then you kind of, oh right, that's, uh, that's actually pretty freaking amazing. So. Uh, it, it's, it's something that we all, I think, uh, enjoy balancing. It's, it's really exciting to be part of something that's much bigger than our museum, much bigger than Savannah, much bigger than Georgia. It's, uh, it's a really national coming together. And so with the, the scope of this collection, these huge cannons don you know, decorating the museum, I think that awestruck moment is going to be that much more amplified.